Hello YouTube, it's PS3 Gaming Scotland here and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are well and gaming lots. So in today's video we'll be looking at or discussing the recent Sony acquisitions and what this means for the gaming landscape going forward. Before we get into the video and discussion, as always let me know your thoughts below. Let me know what you think this means for the gaming industry or landscape going forward and what studios you want Sony to acquire next. I'd love to hear all your thoughts below and if you would be so kind to please like, comment and subscribe and also comment down below as I love to hear and read all your comments. But yeah, let's jump into the Sony acquisitions and what this means for the gaming landscape. So if you don't know, Sony has recently acquired Housemark Studios, the makers of Returnal and Resogun, the PS4 launch exclusive. Nix Studios, who are a PC porting studio, basically they take games and port them onto PC. Now some of these games including Marvel's Avengers that was released end of 2020, well towards the end of 2020, and also they've had their hand at making PC ports for the recent trilogy of Tomb Raider games, most notably Rise of the Tomb Raider and the Tomb Raider Definitive Edition as well as Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And potentially, and the list hasn't been confirmed, there was a tweet about Sony acquiring Bluepoint, one of the PlayStation outlets in was it Italy I think tweeted about it with an image of Sony studio logo and Bluepoint logo saying welcome to the family but that tweet has since been deleted which makes me think there are some sort of truth to this rumour. I definitely think Bluepoint will be acquiring and that tweet shouldn't have been released so somebody looks like they could be getting the sack for that but who knows. So yeah that has sort of got me questioning well what does this mean for the future of the gaming landscape because at the moment there's a lot of variety. There's your AAA, your AA and quite a good in scene. Obviously this Sony acquisition buying up these three, well two companies that have been confirmed and a potential third company was pretty much in my opinion in response to Microsoft acquiring Bethesda and personally at the time I wasn't too fussed. I've not spoke about that on the channel per se as I wasn't really a big Bethesda fan. The only Bethesda game that I played previously was Fallout 4. I played about 10-15 hours maybe and got bored and haven't went back to it since. So I wasn't really that bothered about Microsoft buying Bethesda Bethesda but it does sort of open up that sort of can of worms. Now Microsoft now have more studios under their belt than Sony do so Sony even though personally I didn't think they need to really respond as such does mean that they have less studios so this does this acquisition does go away of a levy in that which gets me thinking will we continue to have the variety of game studios and publishers and cross-gen games i.e. games that are on multiple consoles going forward or will we be in a situation where the biggest publishers with the most amount of money obviously have a lot of money to spend on buying up other publishers or other game studios so will we be in the situation where for example Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo will eventually buy up all the other game studios and publishers that haven't got the financial backing or the reach or in actual fact will these indie studios or just game studios want to remain independent now there are pros and cons to remaining independent and also potentially being bought by a bigger game studio or publisher. Now from disclaimer, I'm a massive PlayStation fan I've got no idea what it's like to start my own games company, especially an indie company, that I can only imagine, and this is just my opinion from what I've read and what I've seen happen in the past, so I could be totally off the mark and totally wrong. If I am, please let me please correct me in the comments, but from my point of view, in my opinion, as it's my own I do think, well, if you're an independent a small independent company, try to make games, try to get some sort of traction out there when you've got hundreds of thousands of games releasing on Steam, PlayStation Network, Microsoft Arcade and even on Nintendo's store on a daily and weekly basis. You really are trying, I would say that's a massive risk, a massive struggle to get noticed, to get popular with your games and that's even before you start. I would assume if you're just a single person trying to do it, it's going to be a lot more difficult trying to get noticed, trying to get seen than if you've got a team of millions of pounds in the bank and hundreds hundreds of people, like a big AAA or whatever studio, so money is obviously an issue for an indie dev, as majority of indie devs are like really small person teams, might not have a lot of finance, might have very limited knowledge of actual coding and making games, because if you've watched some of the documentaries out there, like for example, there was one I was I just finished watching and it's called an indie game, it was from the true story or something along those lines, they'll probably link it in the description, but it's from 2012 and it follows three indie game devs and the struggle that they go through of making their games. Now it's really fascinating and it's definitely worth a watch so I'll, I'll link that in the description if you want to watch it. But yeah, it basically goes through their, str 
strains and struggles trying to raise money trying to get out there you know but if you have or if you're in a position where you've been making lots of games like a particular type of genre of games so for example let's say the median the people that made the median the very sort of survival horror if that's all you do D and D out making survival horror games eventually you're going to get to a point where like you know what we've been making survival horror games for like say 10 15 years we know pretty much all there is to know about making survival horror games now eventually that might attract the attention of a sony or a microsoft or a square enix like a big publisher that might come in to buy you or at least try and buy you now for a small indie studio that's always struggled maybe from the start trying to raise money having that financial security from a big publisher is obviously a big tick for you but there might be some studios out there that like being independent like having that freedom to make the games they want to make they don't have to answer to anybody higher up or corporate but then being part of the bigger team would might mean you'll have more access to marketing or you might have more access to more money that might mean you might make even better games then you have to really come into and think about well what's best for your company what's best for your team there might be some team members that might quit and go elsewhere or if they think that a big sort of company is going to pick them up and spit them out so there are things to definitely think about and say if god forbid say if something if a wee studio gets bought up by a big publisher everything's going well at the start they release that game say for example since these big publishers have really unrealistic goals and also deadlines for whatever reason that small indie dev that has been used to making a particular type of game say for example that particular new project or game doesn't meet the mark doesn't hit the sales numbers or what have you that talent or that studio might disband now we do know that has happened unfortunately where publishers picked up or bought over studios disbanded them a couple years later and that talent that you think oh look that company might one day make it the next Legend of Kane or the next big remake or what have you are just sort of gobbled up by the company and just told okay you're doing this or you're going to be doing that task when really they probably don't want to be doing that and then we've recently seen a company in is it Japan Studio was disbanding and then a couple devs from that studio left to form their own indie and it's a vicious cycle all over again so yeah there are pros and cons for remaining independent and also being bought by a bigger studio let me know what your thoughts are on the recent Sony acquisitions well you think it's going to be a good thing for the game and landscape and industry going forward or do you prefer the variety that we know and love today personally I love variety that's the spice of life in my opinion and yeah counter to that I do think Sony were needing to buy a a couple more studios housemark being a good fit and next will be interesting to see how they get on and that would be a really big success if blue point were actually being acquired by sony and i do think finally square enix even though the other sort of publisher and the big sort of game studio in their own right sony buying square enix i think would make a perfect fit as sony was founded in japan and to try and get another japanese game studio on board like square enix or publisher on board again especially in japan and the current gen systems would be a big boost for sony and the Japanese market so yeah they are my sort of thoughts about this acquisitions and the gaming landscape currently and potentially going forward so yeah as always let me know your thoughts below what do you th make of the acquisitions love to hear your thoughts and yeah thank you very much for watching I've been Petri Games Scotland and I'll see you on another video thanks very much indeed guys bye bye